morning from the Gospel of Luke, please. And we are in Luke's Gospel, chapter number 2. The Gospel of Luke, chapter number 2. And in Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, verse 1, we read, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished, that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And we know that the Lord will add his blessing to the reading of his own precious truth. As we read the gospel accounts, Matthew's account, and as we read Luke's gospel account surrounding the Christmas message, what you will find there in those two gospels, there are many scenes and there are many different people who are involved in the coming of the Lord Jesus to this world so long ago. You, of course, have got Mary and, and Joseph. Those were the two people God had chosen to bring His Son and to send His Son into this world. Of course, it brought much confusion. Mary couldn't understand how could she be with child, saying she knew not a man. And you remember how the angel said to her, well, it's because that which is conceived in thee is of the Holy Ghost. And then, of course, you've got Joseph. And then you've got the angels. And then you've got the shepherds. And then a little later on, you've got the wise men. And you've got the manger. And you've got especially, and not last but not least, most of all, we've got the Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, primary schools all over our provinces have held their nativity plays, telling the great Christmas story, the great Christmas message. And it's the Christmas message this morning that brings hope, and it brings life, and it brings salvation. And on this Christmas morning, 2016, God wants to bring before us this morning a door not a person, a door. And I want to call this door this morning a door that refused to open. A door that refused to open. And I want to, first of all, to look at this door this morning. And I want you to notice, first of all, that here was a door that was, first of all, approached. It was a door that was approached. Because on this Christmas night so long ago, the very first Christmas, this one door was approached. And here's something that thrills me this morning, that this door was the one door out of all the doors in Bethlehem that was chosen to be approached by Mary and Joseph and the unborn child on that first Christmas night. And as I think about that door this morning, that this door was no mistake, it was no mistake this morning that, that this door was approached. This actual door this morning, the door of the innkeeper, was all part and was all parcel of God's great plan. And little did this innkeeper know, folks, little did this innkeeper know throughout that day that this evening would come, that his door would be approached. It was just like any other day. It was just like any other evening when the sun was setting in the western sky. There was no build-up. There was no warning about 
what would take place and who would approach his door that evening. Because that evening, on that very first Christmas, the Lord Jesus was at his door. You may say to me, but George, the Lord Jesus wasn't born. I know he wasn't born, but he was still there. He was there in the womb of the Virgin Mary. And you know, on this Christmas morning, maybe you're not expecting the Lord Jesus to be at your door. Because, friend, this morning, without warning, he may come and approach your door this morning. Many years ago, in the city of Glasgow, a wee, a wee lady, she was a wee lady who lived in Rome. She never was married. Never was married. And she was a great person for Queen Victoria. And on this day, no build-up, no introduction. Next thing was that Queen Victoria knocked on her door. Nobody had told her that the queen was coming. Nobody had warned her that she was coming. But this wee woman was a crabbit woman. That's why she wasn't married. She was a crabbit woman and a, a very sharp woman. And as soon as the door knocks, she says, Away of that with you, away of that with you. And it knocked two or three times. And every time the door was knocked, Away of that with you, away of that. No wonder nobody wouldn't have her. When the, door stopped, when the door stopped being knocked, curiosity nearly killed her. And she took a wee peep out behind the curtains just to see who was at the door. Oh, she was nosy as well as Crabbit. Took a wee juke just to see who it was. And to her amazement, to her amazement, and to her shock, and to her horror, it was the Queen, the Queen of England, Queen Victoria. Do you know what happened? She ran outside, but one of the guards says, I'm sorry, dear, I'm sorry. You've had your chance, and you missed it. Do you know something on this Christmas morning? This may be the chance that the Lord Jesus will come to the door of your heart. He may just come this Christmas morning. 2016, this very morning, could be the very morning. You mightn't have expected this this morning, but you know, this could be the very morning the Lord Jesus could come right to the very door of your heart. You see, this door was approached. As I look at this door in Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, the innkeeper's door, I not only see this morning it was a door that was approached. I'll tell you something else about this door. When I look at the innkeeper's door, I see it was a door that was afforded. It was a door that was afforded. It was afforded the opportunity to open to the Lord Jesus. You know, friends, this morning, that's the greatest opportunity this door ever had, was for the Lord Jesus to come in the, in the womb of the Virgin Mary. Imagine this morning the Son of God being at this man's door. Imagine this man's door <coughs> being afforded the opportunity of allowing the Lord Jesus to enter. Do you know in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20, the Lord Jesus says this? He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man openeth the, heareth my voice and openeth the door, he says, I will come in. Oh, my dear unsaved friend this morning, is it possible on this Christmas morning of 2016 that the Lord Jesus right now may be knocking on your heart's door? You may say to me, but George, he didn't knock. He didn't knock on the innkeeper's door. I know he didn't. Perhaps it was the hand of Joseph that did it. Well, it's quite possible that the Lord Jesus could be using my voice to be using this message to knock on the door of your heart. 
and saying to you, open up and allow me to come in. I want to save you. I must save you. I want to forgive you. I must forgive you. I want to cleanse you from your sin. I will cleanse you from your sin. And the Lord Jesus is perhaps maybe outside somebody's heart's door this morning and saying, pleading, let me in. I want to come in to be Lord of your life. I want to come in to save you. I want to come in to forgive you. I want this morning to be your Lord and Savior. You know, how often perhaps has the Lord Jesus been knocking on your heart's door? And you've heard it. And you've heard it. You know, the Lord speaketh once, yea, twice. But here's something this morning. The old hymn writer says his hands are gently knocking on your door. Outside he's pleading to come in. His heart is breaking as he waits for you to wash you free from every sin. Ah, dear unsaved woman this morning, unsaved man this morning, is it possible that the Lord Jesus is affording you the door of your heart this opportunity to swing open? and to allow you, to allow the Savior to come in. You know, it wasn't just the door that was approached, and it wasn't just the door that was afforded the opportunity. It was a door that answered, and it answered with these two words, no room, no room. And you know, in these closing moments, I want you to notice three things the Lord Jesus opened that day in Calvary. The Lord Jesus opened his hands for the soldiers to crucify him. He opened up his heart to forgive those who were there that day. And he opened heaven for you and he opened heaven for me. Oh, friend, there's room for laughter, aye, and there's room for song. No thought for eternity, how vast and how long. Full of joy and worldly greed, but no room for him who died for thee. And here's the question this morning as I bring this message to a close. Have you any room for Jesus? He who bore your load of sin, as he knocks and asks admission, sinner will you let him in? You see, dear unsaved friend, on this Christmas morning, Christ Jesus came into this world to save sinners. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. He came that we might have life and might have it more abundantly. But here's the question tonight, or this morning. Here's the question this morning. As the Lord has been pointing to this man's door, tell me, is he pointing to your heart's door this morning? And is your heart's door like his door, refusing to open? Ah, friend, what you do with your heart's door concerning the Lord Jesus will determine what he will do with heaven's door concerning you when you die. Swing the heart's door unsaved friend this morning widely open and you bid him enter while he may because this Christmas morning may be the last morning you'll ever have an opportunity to do so. For those of us who know and love the Lord let us rejoice this morning in the salvation that we enjoy and bless his name, the Christ of Christmas. May your door, the door of your heart, be a door that will not refuse to open. May God, by his grace, open your heart this morning and that you will have the sense and the wisdom to bid him enter while he may. After we